this class, we study central mass and shear theorem. Uh, let us consider a system of uh, particles. Uh, there are many particles. Let me use an index i, index i that runs uh, from 1 to n. But there are n particles. Each particle has its own mass, mi, and its position is uh, xi, which is a vector. The sum of sum of mi xi's, sum of mi xi's, where i runs from to n, this one is still a vector. We make a weighted average over the mass. If we average over the whole mass, this is total mass, which is also called the capital M then we obtain the center of mass. That is the definition of center of mass. If, a part, uh, if i equals 1, the center of mass is uh, m1 over uh, m1 x1 over m1. So this is the particle's position. If there are two particles, x1 and x2, their mass is identical, then the center of mass is mx1 plus 2 divided by 2m. That is just a arithmetic average of the two position vectors. Actually, mi over m sum over i runs from 1 to n, this is 1. This is a kind of distribution, probability distribution. And this mi over, mi over m is can also be called the, the barycentric coordinate. Barycentric coordinate. This barycentric coordinates is a linearly dependent coordinate system because even though there are n, n coordinates, there is a because of the constraint, it has only n minus 1 linearly independent coordinate. This redundant set of uh, coordinates is quite useful. And it was first introduced by, do not be surprised, introduced by Mirius, this famous person of topology. And actually, he was a physicist. He introduced the barycentric coordinate to analyze the motion of a celestial bodies. The x, y, z coordinates can be determined in such a way because it is a vector. The components are x, i, y, i, and z, i. And they are weighted average. Let us consider a center of mass of a one-dimensional mass distribution. Suppose that we have a curve, the wire, bend wire of mass M. We can divide this one into many pieces. And for example, the arc length DS carries the mass D capital M. And the density is defined by the mass per unit length and therefore mass of this one can be expressed as the product of uh, mass density multiplied by the arc length. And if I integrate over the whole curve and I will obtain the total mass of the system and then 
at edge at every point there is a position vector and there is the origin these position vectors are weighted by mass dm equals rho ds and after integration we divide this one by the total mass to obtain the center mass so we consider a mass capital M uniformly distributed over a circle of radius R centered at the origin. Then there is a circle centered at the origin and at any point the xy coordinates of this point will be x comma y and this x and y can be parameterized in terms of polar coordinates radius r and this is x-axis angle polar angle theta then x coordinate will be r cosine and y coordinate will be r sine so we we can express the position vector as x like that, so R E1 hat cosine theta, E2 hat plus sine theta. And this is the unit radial vector, E R hat. And differential of this uh, position vector will be this differential and this differential, and that is a minus sine theta D theta and the cosine theta d theta. So we already studied too many times arc length dx and position vector x. This is x plus d dx. This dx is always orthogonal to the radius because r squared is a constant. Its a total differential is a 2 times x dot dx constant differential is zero so it is always perpendicular to each other dx and x are perpendicular so for a fixed radius so because it is a proportion of the er this is x is r times the er hat the differential is proportional to the uh, tangential vector that is called e theta hat it is a minus sine theta e1 cosine theta e2 and the arc length arc length this is uh, this r d theta magnitude is r d theta and the direction is e theta hat the density linear mass density is a mass capital m per length and Length L is the circumference of this circle of radius R, that is 2 pi R, M over 2 pi R. Right? So using this, I can compute uh, dm. dm is rho times uh, ds, and the rho is M over 2 pi R, and ds arc length and r r cancels so rho s x s integrate over s so this is density and this is position vector this one and arc length integrated over 0 to 2 pi whole angle and divide this one by the total mass capital M so we have r square over r r square r square over r 2 pi appears here and m m cancels and we end up with the integral of this and this is a e to the r hat that depends on the angle if we integrate over the angle this is uh, zero 
Uh, even before we integrate, we notice that if we integrate over the whole region x, given x, for any given x, there exists exist minus x, which has an equal distance from the center, but in opposite direction. So in, in this integral is odd function. The integrand of this integral is odd function. That's the reason why this integral exactly vanishes. What is odd function? f of minus x equals f of x. This is even. And f of minus x is a minus f of x. This is odd. And integration from minus a to a dx f of x is a zero for odd and minus a to a f of x equals a double equals the double of a zero to a f of x dx right anyway the center of mass of a uniformly distributed mass distribution over a circle is origin because this zero means the origin let us consider the two-dimensional mass distribution the logic is exactly the same we have some surface and to identify the position of a point on the surface we, we need the two independent coordinate and it can be Cartesian coordinate or cylindrical coordinate or spherical polar coordinate whatever anyway the mass per unit area is the density area mass density and the mass is the sum of differential mass differential mass is the density multiplied by area hence the center of mass position vector can be integrated in this way and then after after that we have to divide this by the total mass of the system let us consider the mass m uniformly distributed over a disk of radius r uniform disk before calculation we already know because of the symmetry the center of mass of disk must be uh, the center of the disk so actually we don't have to compute however this is a good training to evaluate zero using polar coordinate system again we use the same coordinate in previous calculation for the circular distribution we have a fixed radius however in this case we vary the radius the differential displacement vector for along the radial direction is keep the two among the two polar coordinates we keep the angle but vary the radius only the displacement along the radial direction is therefore this part is a fixed and only r is varied from r to r plus dr so differential displacement vector along the radial direction is this keeping the unit radial vector the same the differential length segment from this point by varying the polar angle only in that case we keep the radius the same we vary the angle that means this is d theta dr hat d theta 
So this one is exactly the same as the unit vector along the angle. That is just we can take the derivative of unit radial vector in the risk with respect to the angle theta. So cosine becomes minus sine and sine becomes cosine. Because the radial direction has the displacement to this and the tangential direction displacement this and this is uh, dr dr hat this is r d theta d theta hat the area of this uh, patch is uh, r dr d theta so area of the disk you know the answer pi r square that can be reproduced by integrating over the radius r of the disk and polar angle running from 0 to 2 pi. The answer is, this one gives a what half r squared and this 2 pi, the answer is pi r squared. The surface mass density is obtained dividing the total mass by the area, so m over pi r squared. Then we can compute the center of mass, substituting all of the ingredients into the formula. Uh, we find, again, the vanishing integral. This er has the cosine and sine dependence, and if we integrate over the whole angle to pi, then this two, these two contributions exactly cancel, vanish. Let us next consider the center of mass of the uniform mass of the shell. Okay. Shell, the radius is fixed to be r. So we need a spherical surface, consider the center at the origin, and we can find the coordinate, Cartesian coordinate x, y, and z. A convenient choice to identify the position of a point on a sphere is a spherical polar coordinates. Usually, we introduce the z-axis and we, we connect the point <coughs> and the center. This, this is the radial direction and the z-direction. The angle between the z-axis and the radial direction is defined to be theta. That is a polar angle. What is the range of the polar angle? Because the positive z axis is in here and there is some rotational symmetry, we have angle theta that runs from 0 to pi. We cannot go further because it is redundant. This position is the same as this because they, they can always make a cone. So the angle of the cone from here is extended from 0 to pi only, 0 to pi only. And then we draw a line parallel to the z-axis, then we arrive at a, point, at a point on the xy plane. And we, we define rho, that is a planar radius, planar radius, Rho and rho is uh, rho is x squared plus y squared. Rho squared is and then from the x axis we measure another angle on the plane that runs from zero to two pi. That is called azimuthal angle. Uh, 
Okay, that's the basic idea. So, x square, y square, z square sum is capital R square. And we scale this one with the radius. So, this is one. Okay, let me define this one. Uh, this one runs from 0 to 1. So z over r runs from minus 1 to 1. So it is good to define z over r to be cosine theta. And theta runs from 0 to pi. In that case, cosine theta runs from minus 1 to 1. At 0, at theta equals 0, it is a maximum value. At Theta equals pi is a minimum, but it's upside down. Anyway, if we parameterize z over r to be cosine, because there are sum, these two sum is 1, it is a cosine squared theta, then it's a sine squared theta. That's, uh, that's the reason why this is a row squared. This is a row squared over r squared it is a sine squared. Therefore, rho equals r sine theta, and z equals r cosine theta. And then, rho is x squared plus y squared. We rescale everything with rho in terms of rho. And again, y over rho squared. Square square sum equals 1. So I can choose independent parameter that is called phi. So we choose a cosine squared phi plus sine squared phi equals zero. So by this choice, we can we can express all of the Cartesian coordinates in terms of polar coordinates. So z equals r cosine, and x and y are r sine, r sine. That's not enough some of the square should be our signs. So we have cosine and sine. Again, theta runs from minus uh, 0 to pi. That means the cosine theta runs from minus 1 to 1. And phi runs from 0 to 2 pi. That is the spherical polar coordinate. In summary, we have these results. This is the sphere of radius R, and we find the, the Z coordinate. Z coordinate can be read up as R cosine theta. And then we find the point here with the planar radius rho, and we have a cylinder with a radius rho. And this planar radial vector has the azimuthal angle phi relative to the x axis where the coordinates are. Uh, R zero zero. Okay. <clears throat> we pull, collect everything all together to find the area of this patch. This patch has the angle angle theta. And this is d theta. The arc length, this arc length is r theta, r d theta. And at this point, 
withdraw normal normal line to the xy plane to find the planar radius there is a r sine theta and in here this angle angle difference in the azimuth angle is d phi so the arc length of the horizontal piece this will be the radius of planar radius r sine theta and angle d phi for the azimuth angle therefore if you take the limit d theta goes to zero and d phi goes to zero this curved surface becomes a rectangle of this side r d theta this side r sine theta d phi their displacements are given here the displacement is here and the arc length is r d theta and the displacement is here the arc length is r sine theta d phi. The area of this rectangle is the magnitude of the cross product. Okay, and that is in the infinitesimal limit arc length multiplied by arc length. So r square sine theta d theta d phi. This can also be written in the form r square d cosine theta d phi. The sine difference flips the lower limit and upper limit of the integral. The surface of the sprinkle, sprinkle surface can be integrated by using this surface area element as r square sine theta d theta d phi. Azimuth angle gives to pi, and this one is a d cosine theta running from minus 1 to 1, that is 2, and 2 pi, the, the product becomes a 4 pi, that is solar angle. The density can be computed by taking the ratio of the mass and the surface area this 4 pi r squared substituting everything all together to the formula for the center of mass we, we have density in here position is parameterized by the polar coordinates and surface area element has the differential form Finally, the answer is a zero, as we have expected. The spreker shows the center of mass is the center, and if we choose the center to be the origin, then the value is origin, that is the center of mass. These integrals are all vanishing. Cosine theta. This one is odd function, vanishing. And we can integrate theta first this that is also vanishing no phi phi integral vanishes phi integral vanishes okay Proof of Newton's shell theorem is next. Let us compute the potential energy of a point mass, M. M is placed along the z-axis. The coordinate is a 0, 0, z, a 0, 0, a, and there is origin. Gravitational force due to a mass M distributes uniformly over a spherical radius R centered at the origin. Origin is here, and there is a sphere of radius capital R. And spherical shell has a uniform mass distribution. 
what I would like to do is find out small patch using polar coordinates and let's define the position vector of this patch to be x and this one the position vector of small m is a vector and then this is the vector capture x that is the position of this one subtracted by the this patch subtracted by the position of a point mass the position of this patch can be parameterized using polar coordinates because this is g axis the angle polar angle theta is in here all right so capture x this is capture x x small x minus a small x we have coordinates and minus a this one the coordinate of the small m has non vanished components only along the z axis that is subtracted the distance between these two points can be computed by squaring the three components and add them up and take the square root these two can be summed first because r sine theta is common square and cosine square phi plus sine square phi that is one so r square sine square theta appears here and remaining pieces are r cosine theta minus a square we can expand this r squared cosine squared theta minus 2 a r cosine theta plus a square and there is because there is r squared sine square if these two terms can be summed to have r square and then remaining pieces are copied here now we compute the density density the total mass of this uh, massive shell is capital M because it is uniformly distributed so I divide this one by the area of the surface and then we can reparameterize the surface elements uh, in terms of polar coordinates that is r square d cosine theta and d phi therefore the differential mass of this patch is dm, the density multiplied by the area. So, density multiplied by area. R squared, R squared cancels, and then we have m over 4 pi, and differential of solid, solid angle. So, we are ready to compute, compute the potential energy. Here, we do not compute the uh, gravitational force instead we compute the potential energy because once we know the potential energy then gravitational force can be obtained always by taking the my negative up gradient so that's the reason why we use uh, potential energy instead of a uh, force because it is easier to compute so gravitational potential energy uh, bit, uh, of this uh, small mass m due to dm is this it should be it should not be the volume instead it is a surface so it should be it should be surface this sigma So I have corrected this dv with the sigma. So we substitute all of the previous results. Absolute value of x is in here. And the integral 
as an overall vector. This so dm is a parameter by 4 pi and angular integral. This azimuth angle integral is trivial to pi, and we we have this integral. The integral is trivially obtained by using integral table, and we can we have this expression. We're substituting r square, r square plus a square. My plus two two a r c. So the, these two parameters are determined as. And if we substitute negative sign, then I don't have to worry about this positive sign. Okay, substituting these results, uh, we can obtain this. And then square root of square root of real number square is absolute value. Then we have a plus r absolute value and a minus r absolute value. For any a and b, a plus b minus a minus b, this is two times minimum value of a and b. For example, a, a equals 2 and b equals 1, 2 plus 1 subtracted by 2 minus 1, that is 2, 2, bigger 1, cancels, and it is 2 times the smaller 1. So it is a 2 times the minimum value of a plus b when both of them are positive. This is the case we, we have A and R, both of them are positive real numbers. Because we have uh, AR in the denominator, the final result is two times, two times bigger radius. The overall factor is a GMM, GMM, and there was a uh, one half over a vector that, that these two and these two cancel the finally minus the GMM denominator is uh, bigger the among A and R maximum is appears in the denominator. So if A is greater than radius a is great a is greater than the radius then the potential energy gravitational potential energy of an object with the small small m is the same as the gravitational potential energy between two point point particles with the dis, with the distance a the next one if the radius is greater than the distance between the center and the small m, then it is frozen to be radius. That means the gravitational potential decays, but it cannot decay arbitrarily at a certain point when this radius matches, this, this particle arrives at the surface, it is constant. If it is constant, it is u of r. If it is constant, it's the, this is the derivative and negative sign that is a force along the radial direction. And this one gives f equals zero. So inside a shell, this particle, this massive particle does not feel any gravitational force inside the shell. So this is this is called the shell theorem. But we can extend this idea to consider the sphere that is a field. And we can use the same 
same parameterization but we have a volume instead of surface that means we can vary the radius from 0 to r except that except for this radial direction anything else will be the same so we have one more integral three dimensional integral regarding the polar and azimuthal angle everything will be the same now the patch in the previous case for the spreker shell is replaced with uh, this this box and in the limit as uh, d theta goes to zero d r goes to zero and d phi goes to zero this one becomes a parallelogram that is just a rectangular par parallelogram everything will make uh, every side will be making a right angle and the volume will be the radial direction r d theta r sine theta d theta so this 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 will be the volume and this sine theta d theta will be rescaled with the d cosine theta Using the same parameterization, we have a radial direction, polar angle, and azimuthal angle. This one gives a 2 pi, this one gives 2 to make a solid angle for pi. And this radial integral is a 1 third r cube. So finally, we have a 4 pi r cube over 3. Hence, our uniform. Volume mass density can be computed, mass divided by the volume of the sphere. Now we substitute everything all together to find the central mass, it's, uh, again vanishing independently of the non-vanishing radial uh, integral, the angular integral gives a zero. As I told you previously, angular integral has uh, becomes very simple the azimuthal angle is uh, for a constant if we have 4 pi but it's cosine either cosine or sine phi is always uh, vanishing and polar angle case uh, if we write the polar angle dependent in, ten, in, uh, uh, in terms of cosine theta we can find uh, it's easy to analyze the integrand as an odd function or even function. If it is an odd function, because the integral becomes a, a from minus something to plus something, the odd function case, the integral vanishes exactly. The even function case, it becomes a double of the integral from zero to maximum value. The radial integral has this kind of form. But we remember this uh, r square appears because of the Jacobian. The Jacobian is uh, in the rectangular coordinate system, volume is easily defined. But in the spherical polar coordinates, we have additional factor because although this direction this direction this direction are orthogonal to each other <coughs> angle is not the length the these x y z components are all oh this one must be z so i corrected this typo anyway in a different coordinate system we have to we have always uh, have to consider uh, this this, uh, this this overall factor that appears as a change of variable and that is called Jacobian okay, for example Total differential of x will be r, for 
example, dr dy r should be expressed in terms of x, y, and z. In a similar manner, d theta and d phi. Okay. Jacobian consider this. And you, you will find dr, d theta, d phi, including Jacobian. This is the volume volume of the parallel, parallel pipe that generated by dr, d theta, and d phi. And actually, because these three axes are perpendicular to each other, so d1 is dx radial direction, dx theta direction, dx phi direction, that is a triple scalar product of long dxr, dx theta, dot d x phi. This is the Jacobian multiplied, multiplied by r d theta d phi. And we remember this is dr, dr, r d theta, d theta, dot r sine theta d phi, d phi hat. Okay. We can extend this result to a uniform mass sphere. You you remember the shell theorem for this this one. This one was uh, for the spherical shell of radius r, which is empty inside. And why don't we consider the case of a filled sphere? In that case, mass is distributed over the whole volume inside a sphere, and mass is uh, becomes mass differential is a density multiplied by the differential volume. The differential volume will be r squared dr, d cosine theta, d phi, and over a vector, this density should be mass over volume of the sphere. Again, everything is all together regarding the massive element, the displacement between the massive element and the small m. Everything is the same except that r runs from 0 to capital R. That's the, that's the big difference. And the we have an integral over the radial direction to accept that everything will be the same. Scaling factor is the same. We have changed the denominator depending on the radial integral. You know, the normalization if the denominator uh, if the integral does not have an R dependence, it is it should be one third r cube and factor of two used to be there. We remember when we did the calculation, we had the factor of two in the denominator. That's identical to the previous case for the spreker shell. Again, we make use of the identical integral table. And this angle integral for cosine theta is identical. Finally, we have finally we have this return. The outside outside of the sphere, the answer is exactly the same as a point and exactly the same as a spherical shell of a, mass m that are all con the mass is all concentrated on the spherical surface. The next one is the case we have 
the a inside the radius smaller than the radius in that case we need to compute the contribution of inside because outside the potential should be the same for this point and after that it is a frozen so outside just at this point this one this point mass m small m does not feel the gravitational field due to the outside instead it feels the contribution inside only so the gravitational potential energy is of this kind of form why don't we substitute a equals r then this contribution vanishes absolutely the remaining piece appears because the mass decreases if the whole mass is inside then it should be this this contribution should should be enough but if we go go inside the radius the amount of this volume this volume is proportional to radius cube and the mass contained uh, inside the, this uh, smallest uh, spare of radius a contains a mass proportional to a cube that's the reason uh, why uh, I mean the mass is proportional to m times this kind of form and then we have to consider the radius radius this a to consider the usual gravitational potential energy between the two objects so we, we apply the radius effective radius then it this one cancel to make the a square dependence All right so what we have seen is uh, until is that there's two mass m and small m the gravitational potential energy is this this is r we use the radius capital r and we have distance a then the gravitational potential energy between these two objects so a is outside gm this is m and small m gm m over a this is gravitational potential energy if it is inside it's smaller i mean it is uh, a sprinkler shell gm m over capture R it is a frozen but it is a field then we have additional piece to cancel this part that, that finally finally for the two point particles small m the radius potential energy becomes a in, zero at infinity it decreases arbitrarily so this is to the minus infinity but if we have a spherical shell then it does not decay arbitrarily but when it reach the radius it is frozen so this is the case of a shell and if we feel is spare with a uniform mass distribution what we find we find that it decreases this is a sprinkler shell this is a sprinkler shell but in the in the case if it is a fully filled it approaches this is the di different 
shape. This is filled one. If it is filled, gravitational potential energy does not decrease arbitrarily and from the surface. From the surface, it decays linearly. And this linear dependence is because of this factor, and that is due to the mass dependence. Uh, mass is uh, depending on the radius A, this is cube, cube contribution, and the effective potential that is proportional to 1 over A to make A squared. Right? So this is a square. This is not a line. And the reason why I have uh, written this one as a line is a gravitational force. It's one of r square and is uh, proportional to r. So if you take the derivative with respect to a, we have gm. Derivative of a, then it becomes a squared gmm minus a squared gmm because the minus gradient means a minus along the direction of the radial direction. So take the derivative, it becomes one of a squared, and put the negative sign on it, one of a, uh, minus one of a squared. And if we take the derivative, because it is a constant. This, these two disappears, so this one will give gmm r q a. So that is gmm r squared a over r. When we substitute a equals r, this one disappears at the boundary, we have inverse scale law. So we have uh, what what over this is f of r and this minus one of r square style and in in here we have minus g m m r over r this kind of one. this is r square so it becomes a linear it's a linear it, it, gravitational force is linear it is r one of r square and the later part we Summarize the result for combining two systems of particles. Here I can find the center of mass of first set. I can find the center of mass of the second set. Then we can combine these two to find the center of mass of the system 1 plus 2. This is the way how to find the center of mass system, uh, center of mass of the uh, combined system. The method can be applied to solve a very simple calculation for the center of mass of triangle. And middle school students can compute the center of mass of a triangle. They know the answer. They know the answer. And this is how to reproduce the result using uh, vector algebra. We studied a little bit about the Jacobian for changing variable in the multidimensional volume integral. And if we make use of Cartesian coordinates, we don't have to do that. Instead, we have a, a, some complicated boundary, but you can still uh, evaluate the integral in this way. So why don't you compare the calculation within the Cartesian coordinates and using the polar coordinates? Okay, that's it. Thank you.